Hi everyone, sorry for the a bit of tech problem. Uh, so this talk is about secure container image using uh, Woofy. Um, my name is Ang, I'm from BB Bank, one of the top uh, by bank in Vietnam. I'm leading the tech platform in BB Bank. So, so let's start. Um, uh, I will talk a bit about the context uh, that we have at uh, BB Bank. So I'm running the platform engineering team and then our goal is to provide the development team, the developer team, with a set of secure image so that uh, content image so that they can build the application on top of it. So the goal of the base image is that they have to be secure. They have to be reproducible. They have the S form, the uh, software being a material. They must provide the view, uh, view provenance so that they can, you can confirm it that it's really view from ours. It has to be easy to extend for the, the, the app team so that they can add the dependency that they needed. And it must be low maintenance. It's, uh, ideally, it should be almost like autopilot. We don't have to touch anything about it. And it has to be get, get out of the developer's way so that your developer doesn't have to care about all the vulnerability in the base image. You know, they can focus on building the, the application on top of it. And, and the base one, we will handle it by ourselves. So we have a few options to choose the base image that uh, to build our app on top of it. The option number one is that you can build our own image from the traditional OS. Like when you write in, the, in your own Docker file like from Ubuntu, from Debian, this is using the traditional OS. The other option is that you can use the official omit. The reason that I put uh, official in quote here is that they're actually viewed by the Docker team, not from the Python team, not from Node.js or Go team. This is Docker team, they provide the official so-called image so that you can write like from Python. This is actually maintained by Docker. The third option is that you can use uh, Google's distro list. This is the an undistro OS that Google provided. They are very minimum, so that with a very uh, dependency on it. And the last option is that you can build your own base image on top of a container optimized OS. One example of this one, it could be like Red Hat UBI or Chingat Goofy OS, which is this talk is about. So I will go through all the options and I will compare the pros and cons of each option and why you should go with with the, the one that I recommend here. So, the first question you will ask is that why? Why do we need to build a new OS? The first reason is that the traditional OS doesn't work. When you talk about traditional OS, you, you mean something like Ubuntu, you mean something like Debian. Why, why doesn't it work? Because they have their own release kit. So when there's, there's a new vulnerability, new CVE coming in, they will not release the image right away. They have their own release kit, like every three months, every six months, or maybe once a year. They won't package, they won't package all the past or the fix until their next release could be next year. You don't know, right? And they were designed for desktop and server usage, which is different with our use case here. A lot of tools included uh, by the application, which might be like the recent tool. For the tool to be included in the OS, it can take like uh, a long time. The next option is the Google Distro List. This one works for certain use case. I will talk more about it, but it's very hard to extend it. They are using Basin View, which is a view tool by Google, and if you want to extend it, you have to uh, ideally you have to extend the Basin View pipeline. So the Goofy OS is, is like this one. It's very similar to this rest of Google. In fact, the team that built Goofy is also the same team at Google that built this OS. They, leave, they left Google and then they built the new OS and this OS, this Goofy one. It's similar to this OS, but instead of basing it on Debian and Ubuntu, this OS is based on Debian. So that's, if there's new vulnerability happen in Debian and Ubuntu, this OS also have it because they have, they are basing it on on Debian. So it's like this OS, but based on the uh, rolling release distro. So there's a new uh, pass coming in, new release coming in. They package it and release it right away. It's very similar to Unpy OS, 
but instead of using MUSF, they're using ZDC. The reason for that is that ZDC is very common. They're using Debian, they're using Ubuntu. Unpi use MUSF, but it's not really compatible with most of the software that we use. Most of the software that we use is uh, using a uh, Lipsy variant of GLIPC. And they build pipeline to extend it. You can use write Jama instead of extending Buzz and View. Buzz and View is a very difficult tool to use. So uh, let's talk about the, the, the option of using the official runtime image. Um, the size will be very based on the, the arbitrary base image that you choose, and they are not reproducible. The reason why is that Docker by default is not reproducible. Whenever you view it and you run it again, they will produce a different binary because they include the stuff like view time and then it change every time you run it, right? So you cannot view it today and then review it tomorrow and then they will be selected. It cannot. So it's not reproducible. They have their own release cadence, which means that you know whenever when I view it, uh, like maybe every month, every two months, every three months, they have their own calendar. You can also uh, uh, answer it. They are written with CD because, like I said, uh, when they're using their their own release cadence and there's new CD coming in, they don't care about it. Next time I I view it, I release it. The fix will be improved, but for right now I don't care about it. So your image will have a lot of CVE inside it. They have very limited S form support. S form is a software bin of material. S form is like okay, this image I included this library, this version, this library, so that you know that what's inside that image that you have. But the pros option, the pro is that it's very friendly. Everyone knows about this official image, and that it's very easy to extend it. Very different with this request because to, to extend this request, you have to know buzz and view. So it has a lot of cons. Uh, one pros, the last one. Okay, talk about the, the this request option. It works for certain use case. They provide a set of images that they, they supported, like Python, Go, you know, JS. But other than that, you have to be with yourself. So it works for certain use case. If you're using Node.js, okay, go ahead and use it. If you're using GoLang, yeah, go ahead and use it. But if you use something else, you have to maintain it. And they're way on top of traditional OS, like I said before, they're basing on Debian. So if Debian had this vulnerability, this CV, this OS would have it. This OS cannot fix it by themselves, and they have to wait for Debian team to fix the issue, the vulnerability. And then it will be included in the next release of this OS. And they are very hard to extend, like I said before, they invite you, not exactly easy to extend. So if you want to include a certain library in it, you have to run a command to select that dependency and all of their sub-dependency inside it, the chain of dependency. And then you have to include all of that inside your image. So very hard to extend. So talk about the next option. How do you use the container image yourself? Basically, the, the container image is just file system layout. You know, you specify the layout, some metadata on top of it, and it's very easy to create. It. It's not that hard. So, a quick recap: What do we want from an ideal base container image? It has to be very minimum. So, the design about uh, the, the design principle of this OS is that we only include what you use in runtime, and the rest of it you do not include it, so that you can get real CVE. Alongside with it, it has to be smaller in size, and we want to achieve the goal of zero CV if possible, no vulnerability whatsoever. It has to be very easy to extend so that you know if a team they need a specific dependency, they can easily extend it. It has to be reproducible, like I said. You know, if you view it today and then you run it tomorrow, you get the exact image bit by bit, zero one zero one like that, and it must provide the S bomb, the bit of material, what software they include inside the image, and the attestation that we know for sure that this image is produced by us. We view it, we sign, and then you can verify that it's really signed by us. So that's the goal that we want from ideal base of the image. So 
the team at this rest, the team inside Google that built this rest, they were several of them, and then they leave, they left Google, and they come to file a startup and build this uh, open source OS, uh, optimized for container users. They name it Goofy. So this is what an image with a uh, Goofy looks like. It's very simple. You have a part, you have all the podcasts that included, you have all the repository and curing, entry point, and the environment variable. It's, it's Jamo. And then you have to specify the repository where you download the package from, which package you want to download it, the curing, so that you can verify the package signature and everything. And that's, that's it. That's the minimum image in Goofy. And I'm making sure that everything in Goofy is declarative and reproducible. You view it today, and if you view it tomorrow, you get the exact same image if you lock the version. In this image I have, I have only one package Goofy base layout, but I did not lock the person in it, so therefore it's not reproducible. But if you specify a person like 100 slash uh, revision 0, something like that, you lock it, and then it will become reproducible. And this is very important. We want zero vulnerability, zero CVE whatsoever, so that whenever the development teams, they build the application on top of it, they don't have to worry about the base that they use, and they don't have any vulnerability in it. We will take care of it, okay? And you can work you can work well with up to five workflow. For example, you just do like from GoLang and then you build your application on top of it, right? And with, with this one, we can just using the current one, the current workflow that we have. We just change one line from GoLang to from our custom Go image that we have, and that's it. One line change, and then it becomes zero CVE. Um, to extend a new package in Goofy is also really simple. You have to write YAML. It's simple and declarative, the licensing and everything. How do you view it? What package you need to view it? And then the step you view it. For example, in this one, it's like ignore all the licensing and everything. You have the environment to view it, so that you have the VZ bulk, you have SSL client, CA certificate, and then you uh, there's a protocol config, right? And then make it slow. And then strip the binary afterward. Pretty similar stuff with all other OS that we have. And then it will provide the highest S bomb quality you have because you know it's building everything from source. You know exactly the revision that we have, and then the quality of S bomb will be the highest in here. So um, this is just an example of the Nginx image that when we test with the, the official Nginx image and the one that we view. In the official one, they have uh, Debian uh, 12.5, they have 166 vulnerability. Of those, they have like two critical one, 39 high vulnerability, 36 medium, and 88 low CV. If we were to view it, we feel fit, we get zero. This is an example that I tested with a uh, 3 v image engine. This is the official engine. The other one is the Nginx powered by Woofie. So the, the key to, to zero CV is really simple. You know, you try to stay close with the latest release on the person as you can. You don't have to use the latest, but the ability to follow the latest with the close distance is very very simple. Because if you don't update today, you know you, you you won't be able to update it when you needed it. You know, for example, you, you can't update it today, and when there's really critical CVE coming in, and then you can't update it, that's when the problem occurs. Um, that's all for my talk. If you have any question, um, um, well, okay.